One of the most important things that every shop should have is an accurate way to measure things. For years I've used these tape measures, but they're very inaccurate. If I put this next to a yardstick, we'll measure out the 17 inch mark. But if we look at this, you can see I'm, I'm almost a 16th of an inch off, and that's just not acceptable for a tape measure. I could just use a, a yardstick like this, but in time they always seem to get bent up, and that's a pain if I'm trying to draw a line, I'm constantly moving my hand, and of course there isn't any kind of backing on it, so it can slide around as I'm measuring things. I came across this at Menards, and this is a really good tool because it's got this third edge on it, which keeps this square. It's also got a backing on it, but the backing's I don't think very good. So I thought I'd make my own that would solve these problems, and this is what I came up with. It's got a grippy surface using Tracker Runner. It also gets me right to the edge like this, so it's easy for me to draw lines on the bottom. One addition that I added was that I put this little hook on the end of it. So like a tape measure, I can hook it onto the end of my board and I can get a good accurate reading. And that's better than trying to line this up on the edge and to get that, that reading. So let me show you how I made this. It's actually very simple. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this, but I'm gonna show it to you in a, in a few different parts. You don't have to add the hook and you don't have to put the tracker runner on. And that's probably two thirds of the video. So I've broken things up into chapters and you can skip ahead if you really don't want these two things. I will note that I have the material list as well as the tool list on my website. Go to the description down below and you'll find a link to it. The first thing we're going to talk about is the hook on the end. I'm at the table saw right now and I want to cut a slice of this off. It's a thickness of my inner tube here. I've measured this and it's about 27, 30 seconds of an inch. It doesn't really matter how, how thick it is at this point. I like to have more meat on this side of the blade. So I'm going to use a thin strip jig here and it's just going to go right up against the blade and I'm going to measure this so that's 27, 30 seconds away. Now I'll move this. And I'll go ahead and make my cut. Now that I've made my cut, I'm going to go ahead and put my check mark on the top here. And this is going to be 27, 30 seconds this way. With this cut, I'm going to bring my blade all the way down. And I just want it to be just barely above the surface. So right about there. That's about an eighth of an inch. Maybe I'll go a little bit less. With my check mark side up, which again is going to be the width that I cut, which is 27, 30 seconds. I'm gonna find the approximate center. It doesn't absolutely have to be the center, but I'd like it to be as much as I can. At this point, we need to cut this so that it's the exact width of the length of our piece that we just did. So for mine, I need to cut this at 27 64 of an inch, which is a crazy small number. So I'm gonna cut this roughly down to size on my table saw, and then I'm gonna take this over to my planer and plane it the rest of the way so it's just absolutely perfect. Of course, the uh, track that we made in the center needs to be part of the side that we cut, that we keep. So keep that in mind. Because I don't want this to move, I'm gonna use a feather board. Back here at the table, I've cut a piece off from the end and I'm gonna see if I can put them together. And yeah, I think it, it'll work. I'll be using a hanger bolt, so I wanna make sure that I'm obviously far enough in that it grips into the wood, but I'm gonna go a little bit further, so about right there. My pieces are gonna to go together like this, but I wanna round this outside corner off. So now that's rounded right there. I had a subscriber send me this in the mail. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if she wants me to let her everyone know our name. I'm gonna use a little bit of wood glue and you probably could get away with pressing them in there real tight. We we'll wanna obviously make sure that we get that flush with the surface. Or even right below the surface is probably even better. But I wanna drill a hole out that will fit the wood screw end part. I've created this channel so that I can get a nice square hole inside of the tube here. But to get it started, sometimes it can be hard. So what I'm gonna use is a, a tapering bit to get it to the right size. Don't grab a pair of pliers and try to twist this in. It doesn't work. You just chew up your threads. I grab two of these, I jam them together a little bit. And there we go. Now, because I don't want this to flex, in any way, I'm going to use some quarter inch steel. This is just some scrap I found in my garage. 
you will want to make sure that the steel that you use, whatever you use, and you could use aluminum if you wanted to, you want to make sure that it is the width of the tubing. So we really want this to be on the walls of the tubing, which will hopefully allow us to have a very flat 90 degree clamped edge when we're done. All right, to find the center, I'm going to take a, a little measuring stick here, and I'm going to go up to an inch. I'll use a machine to square, and then I'm going to connect my corners. I'll go ahead and drill this out at a quarter of an inch, which is the size of my hanger bolt. Now I went ahead and cut this at about an inch and a half and I cleaned it up as well as rounded the edges and this should be ready to go. This will fit right on the end and it, there's just enough that there's it's not catching on the end. It's a little bit shorter than the edge here which will be good if I just want to turn this over but I'll add my thumb knurled knob and we'll check to see how square this is and that is nice and square. Now that the hook's done I'm going to show you how to add this grippy tracker runner. If you haven't seen my carpet runner video, you should watch it. It's really good. But basically we want something that's going to keep this from moving across the surface when we're, we're measuring things, which is a common problem. This tracker runner has a really nice, very grippy surface to it. So I'm going to take this and I just want to cut out a strip that's going to fit on the bottom of this. I'm going to do about a quarter of an inch over all together. And after this is cured, I'll trim it later on. A pair of scissors works just fine to cut this stuff. If you have a hook on the end of yours, we'll go ahead and take it off for now. Before we epoxy this on, we want to make sure that there is all the oil and everything is off of this as well as the surface has been prepped a little bit, giving it the epoxy something to hold on to. If you bought a piece of steel that's perforated like this, the way that they drill each one of these holes, they go in through the front and out through the back. So you're going to have one side that's going to have a catch on it and the other side that's going to be kind of dimpled inwards. This side is dimpled in here and this is dimpled over here. So I've got these two edges. I really want to glue this against it and my tape measure will go on the top where the dimples are up here. I want this to be as flat as it can be. As you can see, it kind of sticks up because of the, the outside sticks up a little bit. I'm going to start off by using 80 grit sandpaper to sand this down. Got a little 50-50 vinegar here. I'm just gonna clean off the whatever I grinded down as well as any oil that might be on the surface. I will be using an entire thing of epoxy. I think that that should probably be enough for the entire thing. We'll mix this together in a, a muffin mold. Instead of putting my epoxy on the metal first, I think I'm gonna put it on the carpet runner. And that's because I don't want it to drip down into the other parts. We'll flip this over now and we're going to lay it right on top. We'll give this a little bit of time to cure and we'll come back. I'll go ahead and use a utility knife now and I'm kind of pointing the corner in and cutting a little bit below the surface so that I don't have anything that hangs over the edge. I'm also going to cut the edge and I'll cut back from it a little bit. can see right there. I'll go ahead and use my utility knife. I'm just going to scrape right along here and get any glue that might still be on the edge. You'll obviously want to do the same thing on the opposite side in case you ever use this as a straight guide. If you decided to skip the first two chapters, this is pretty much the, the bulk, the meat of everything. I'm going to show you how I attach this ruler to the square tubing. Now I put my hook so that it, it's facing the side that my measuring stick will go on. And I'm going to place it up against it for now. And I'm going to pay attention to the top here. So I see that at every inch, there is a gap on the steel. And what I'm going to do is use some rivets along this. You could always use screws. You could try to just do some kind of epoxy on the measuring stick. But I really want to use rivets because I can always drill them out and put another tape on if, I don't know, something happens to this tape. Sometimes these wear off the numbers. But right now, what I want to do is I want to just find where I'm going to put these rivets. And I think I'm going to do it every, I don't know, five inches. I won't want one here because of the, the wooden block, but I want to start at 30 inches. 
So I'll go 30 and 25. Pay attention to the side that you want to put down as well. I want to use these 16th inch marks. At each of the fives, I want to drill a hole out. So I'm going to use a, a marking gauge here. On the ends, I think I'm going to cheat and just use a little bit of double-sided tape because I don't have a whole lot to drill into. I will be using some rivets that are, these are an eighth inch by five sixteenths. So I'm going to need to drill out each of my holes on my ruler at an eighth of an inch. I'll use an ugly chisel to clean up the back end of this. Okay, now when I attach this, I really like the idea of having a little bit of a gap underneath. So I'm, I think I'm gonna use some toothpicks along here just to get it up to the right height before I clamp it down. I like it a little bit better where I can put my pencil right underneath the line. Again, you can do it however you want. The most critical part of this, obviously, is making sure that we are right up against the edge. And right now, I'm just gonna do a couple clamps. That way I can drill it, and then later on, I can take off the clamps and then not worry about this moving around. For some reason, this didn't record right, but I took the measuring stick that's clamped to my steel tubing and drilled each hole out at the drill press. And now I can go back and finish the rest of these. And now, as I mentioned, I'm just gonna use a piece of double-sided tape. Um, this stuff is the heavy duty stuff with the filaments. If you clamp it, it'll actually get even more difficult to remove. To use this, it's, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna put it on the end of my board. Now I can measure wherever I want, like let's say 12 inches here. Just put it right on that line. I can cut this at 12 inches. I think that this is a great solution to the problems that I was facing, but let me know in the comments down below what you think of it. Is this something that you might build? Thank you so much for watching, and again, if you're interested in this, you can go in the description down below and click on the link to it.